Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss troubled debt restructuring. In the prior session, we looked at a troubled debt restructuring and we explored the option of settling the debt. Another option when you have a troubled debt restructuring is modification of terms. And this is what we will discuss in this session. When we modify the terms of the loan, how does it work? And we have two treatments when it comes to that. Sometimes the future cash flow which is the undiscounted is less than the carrying value and sometimes the future cash flow which is undiscounted is greater than the carrying value of the debt but what is trouble debt restructuring is when the creditor which is the lender the person that gave money lend money grant concessions to the debtor to the person that borrow money not made under normal circumstances and what i what i discussed in the prior session this happens happened a lot to construction companies in the real estate crash of 2007 2008 so this is what we are discussing now we discussed the settlement option and we said that what we can do is the the creditor and the debtor they can settle they can close the deal by the debtor given something to the creditor the creditor will accept and that's 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 over or what we can do is the creditor can change can modify the terms of the loan now how can they modify the terms of the loan well there are many tools that you can do it they can lower the interest rate on the loan they can give the debtor more time to pay basically extend the maturity i'll give you if you cannot pay this amount now i would move it a little bit into the future I can reduce your principal amount, forgive some of the principal amount. I can reduce or forgive any accrued interest that you have not paid. I can use any of the combination above. So when I'm, when I'm modifying the loan, I have all these options, including a combination of these options. Now, the most difficult thing, in my opinion, for a student to understand when it comes to loan modification is how to compute the debtor and the creditor gain and losses so i'm gonna i'm gonna show you how to compute them side by side then we will work an example to illustrate this concept for the debtor for the borrower the borrower will have a gain how do we compute the gain for the debtor well think about it why would first do you understand why the debtor could have a gain well the debtor could have a gain because the borrower it's gonna it's gonna forgive a certain amount of money well as a result if you if you tell me you don't have to pay this amount or you have to pay me 50 or 60 or 70 percent of this amount then i basically have a gain because i'm settling my loan without paying it how do i compute a gain? here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna look at my loan i'm gonna look at my liability what's my loan now what's my liability now and i'm gonna compare it to my future undiscounted so it's easy cash flow I would look at my liability now if my liability now is a thousand dollar and what i have to pay you in the future under the new terms is eight hundred dollars guess what i'm paying less than my liability i have a gain otherwise i have no gain so you either have a gain or you don't have a gain those are the options gain or no gain now for the creditor the creditor will always have a loss why because the creditor is accepting less then the amount of their note receivable. The creditor is giving the concession. The creditor is telling the lender, pay me less. Be why? Why would they do that? Because the creditor, they want to walk, walk away with some money. They want to cut down on their losses. Therefore, they're willing to work some sort of a deal with the debtor. So they don't lose everything 100%. So they will have a loss. Otherwise, if they collect everything, they will have no gain and no loss. Well, if they're going to collect less, they will have a loss. How do we compute the loss on the lender? Please listen to me carefully. We're going to compare the expected new cash flows discounted at the old historical rate. Few things we have to be worried about. First of all, new cash flows discounted at old rate. Wow, it's a lot. So we have to see what's the new cash flow. We have to discount the cash flow using the old percentage rate. And we're going to compare this to the current liability. What is the liability now? What's the liability now? What's the liability now? So if the liability now is $1,000, and if the new discounted cash flow discounted at the old rate is 800 or let's make it 700 So guess what? I have, I'm supposed to have and basically a loan means for the creditor it's a receivable if i'm expecting to receive a thousand now i'm only going to receive 700 i have a loss of 300 don't worry we will, we will work an example to illustrate this concept 
So let's take a look at this example. On December 31st, X1, local bank and Adam Construction Company, which is experiencing financial difficulties due to the housing crisis, signed a debt restructuring agreement. The parties agreed to the following. One, local bank to forgive $600,000 of, of the principal balance by reducing the loan from $300,000 to $2.4 million. Two, local bank to extend the maturity date from December 31st x1 to december 31st x4 i'm going to give you three more years to pay three local bank to lower the interest rate by two percent from 12 which is the old interest rate now i'm going to charge you 10 percent the new interest rate now let's compute to see if the debtor has a gain if so how much and let's see how much is the creditor's loss the debtor the debtor will compare the old loan prior to re prior to the, to the restructuring to the future undiscounted cash flow so the old loan is 3 million the future undiscounted cash flow is 2.4 million plus 10% 240,000 and we're going to be we're going to be making four payments on this so simply put i the debtor will be paying in the future 3 million 120 well the future cash flow is greater than 3 million therefore we have no gain no gain on the loan easy Remember, this is an easy computation because we don't involve discounted cash flow. Let's compute the loss for the creditor. The creditor will, will look at their old receivable, which is $3 million, and they will compare it to their new discounted cash flow. Well, what are what is the creditor getting now? The creditor is getting one, two, three payments. The creditor is getting three payments, and each payment is 240000 240000 240,000 plus they're going to get the principal amount which is 2.4 million. Now what would the creditor do? The creditor will discount those payments at 12% and equal to 3. So this is this is what we're going to do. We're going to discount the 2.4 million at 0 0.711 0 0.71178 which is from the present value of a single amount discount the new payment based on the old rate again based on the old rate 240,000 times 2.40183 which is the present value of an annuity table and what we find out the value of the new loan basically value of the receivable of the note receivable for the creditor is 2,284,711 notice this is the value of the new loan the value the new note receivable which is the loan for the for the for the debtor well the creditor had a receivable of three million now they took a loss the loss is seven hundred and fifteen thousand what they're going to do they're going to book bad debt expense for that amount and credit allowance for doubtful account for that amount notice they took the expense up front seven hundred fifteen thousand two eighty nine so let's see what's going to happen after we compute the gain or the loss for the debtor the debtor is going to complete a new a new schedule to compute their payments and to compute how much of it is interest how much of it is is principal so let's take a look at this remember the creditor and, and under those circumstances the creditor has no gain remember the creditor has no gain and we we computed this i'm sorry the debtor has no gain so now what do we do now well we're going to start with the carrying amount of the note then we're going to take the carrying amount of the note and first compute interest expense how much is interest expense how do we compute the interest expense we're going to be using an effective rate of 1.4276 Hold on a second. How did we come up with this 1.4276? It's not anywhere. Let me tell you how you come up with this number. You set up this formula and you would say, okay, 3 million, the old loan, equal to 1 divided by 1 plus i raised to the fourth, raised to the, uh, sorry, raised to the third power times, times 2.4 million, which is the new loan, plus 1 minus 1 over 1 plus i raised to the third power over i times the payment and you solve for i now in an intermediate accounting course most of the time you will be given i you will be given this is called the new interest rate the new interest rate or you could use a financial calculator for this exercise i'm just going to tell you we're going to be using an interest rate of 1.4276 however i gave you the formula if you're interested in computing the formula or use a financial calculator for that matter so 3 million times 
3 million times the interest rate 1.4276%, it's going to it's going to give us interest expense of 42,828. Now we're going to be making a payment of 240,000, right? Of that payment 42,828 is interest expense and the remainder will be reduction of the principal note. So payment is split between interest expense and reduction of the note. Let's take a look at the journal entry. The interest payment would look something like this. I'm going to reduce my note for the first payment for 197,172. I'm going to record interest expense of 42,828 and I'm going to credit my cash 240,000. This is the first payment. The second payment, the cash will stay the same. The second payment my interest expense is $40,013 and I reduce the loan by $199,987. And the third payment will apply with these numbers. Then at the end, by the end of 1231, 20x4, the balance will be 2.4 million. We pay the last payment of 2.4 million and we pay off the loan. So these are the payments for the debtor. These are the payments for the debtor. Before we look at the creditor journal entries, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course nor replace your accounting course. I'm a useful addition. I'm going to give you additional resources that's going to help you succeed on your exam, succeed on the CPA exam. My motto is saving CPA exam candidate and accounting student one at a time. You have to take, give me a chance, subscribe for one month. You like it, you feel it's helping you, you keep it. You don't, you cancel. If not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university doing on the CPA exam. This is a list of all my accounting courses that I have. Lectures, multiple choice, true false exercises that's going to help you prepare for your accounting career and the CPA exam. My supplementary CPA resources are aligned with your Becker, Roger, Wiley, and Gleam. I also provide you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions with detailed solution. Invest in yourself. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation, like this recording, share it with other, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. The creditor will start with a balance of 2,200,000. Now, how did we come up with this carrying of notes, carrying of notes receivable? And this is, by the way, this is the creditor, so we're looking at note receivable here. So how did we come up with this one? Well, remember, we had to compute the present value, the present value of the of the loan amount and the present value of the payment and this is the value of the note at the beginning of the of this modification terms then what we're going to do we're going to find out what's our interest revenue our interest revenue is the note times 12% so it's going to be the note times 12% and it's going to give us 274165 so the cash is based on the new loan so the cash amount the 240000 it's a loan of 2.4 million times 10%. This is how much the borrower is paying us now. And the payment is split between interest revenue and an increase in the notes receivable. So if we got paid 240,000, well, interest revenue is 274,165. The remainder, it's going to be increase in the note, increase in the note. So we're going to debit cash 240,000, debit allowance 34,165, and credit interest revenue 274,165. Then for payment two, cash will be the same. The allowance will be 38,265 and the interest revenue will be 278,265. And obviously this will be the entry for year three. By year three, we're gonna make the last payment and the last payment will be 2.4, uh, the last payment, last payment that we will receive will be 2.4 million. We debit allowance 600,000 and we credit the old note of 3 million. This is the last payment. In case you are wondering, why are we debiting allowance for doubtful account? Well, by debiting the allowance, we're, we are reducing the allowance because remember the allowance is a contra receivable. By reducing the allowance, we are increasing the notes receivable. So just in case you're wondering, why am I debiting the allowance? Now let's change the scenario a little bit for this example and change the following agreement between Local bank and Adam Construction. Now, local bank's gonna forgive 1.1 million rather than 600,000. It's gonna reduce the loan from 3 million to 1.9 million. Also, 
local bank is going to extend the note and it's going to lower the interest rate by 2%. So what we did is rather than forgiving 600,000, local bank forgave 1 million 1,100,000. Again, we're going to try to find out whether the debtor has a gain, yes or no, a gain or no gain, wh when, how much, and the, the creditor, if they have a loss, of course, the creditor will have a loss, just how much is the loss. Let's look at the debtor first, Adam. They have an old loan of 3 million, and the new loan, what they're responsible for, is 1.9 million, 1.9 million, plus 3 interest payment of 190,000 because the loan now is 1.9 million, the new interest rate is 10. So they have to pay 2,470 in total. Do they have a gain? Yes, they do. And the gain is 530,000. So Adam will happily debit notes payable 530,000. They would reduce the notes payable 530,000 and they will credit it again on troubled debt restructuring. So notice in this example, we had a gain. In the prior example, we had no gain. Okay, now you have to be a little bit careful. You're going to see what's going to happen to the debtor when they journalize their entries next. Now they have a gain. The creditor, what's going to happen to the creditor now? The creditor, they have a prior. Um, when I say loan is, I mean notes receivable. But since I just, for simplicity, I'm just comparing loan to loan, but it's really a notes receivable pri prior to the debt restructuring. I should have changed it to notes receivable. A discount, the new loan, the loan from the debtor, discount the new loan based on the old rate. So when we do the discount, we'll use the old rate. Be careful. So 1.9 million times a factor 0 0.71178, 1,352,000. We're going to discount the new payments based on, again, the old rate, 190,000, which is the new interest payment, times 2.40183, 456,348. What we're going to do, we're going to add those two and we're going to compare them to the three million so let's go ahead add them up compare them to the three million and find out how much is our loss so if we take one million three hundred fifty two thousand three eighty two plus four hundred fifty six thousand three forty eight and that's going to give us a new loan new notes receivable of one million eight hundred eight thousand seven hundred and thirty so if we take this number the new notes receivable deducted from the 3 million old notes receivable, we find out that we have a loss of 1 million. The loss is 1,191,270. We have a loss. And this is the this is how we did the discounting. The present value of a single amount, the present value of an annuity factor, 2.401. Now, what would the creditor do? The creditor will debit bad debt expense for the amount 1,191,270 and they will credit allowance for 1,191,270. Remember the new balance now, be careful, the new carrying amount of the notes receivable is 1,808,730. We're going to see this again once we prepare the schedule for the creditor. Now let's take a look at what the debtor will do and what the creditor will do subsequent to this. The debtor, the, de the, the debtor is going to start with the carrying amount of a notes payable of 2,470,000. Then the debtor will start to make a payment of 190,000. How much of that payment is interest and how much of it is a reduction in the notes? None of it is interest. Zero of it is interest. Why? Why? Because the debtor now, they cannot even pay the principal. Okay, everything that they're paying, everything that they're gonna pay is 570,000. Everything that they pay in total. And the creditor forgave 1.1 million. So not, none of their payment is interest. They cannot deduct any of it. So all the payments, it's going to go toward reducing the carrying value. So when would that happen? Well, when the sum of the indiscounted cash flow is less than the carrying value of the old debt. Then guess what? We have no interest. Okay. So we're going to debit notes payable 190 for the 190, credit cash 190. And we're going to reduce the note to 2 million 200. 80,000. Payment two, same thing. So we're going to be debiting cash, debiting notes rec notes payable, crediting cash, and payment three, debiting notes receivable, crediting cash. And the balance will become 1.9 million. Then we make the last payment, what we agreed on. They reduce the balance to 1.9 million, and we are done. So notice here, why did we do this? Why we did not account for any interest expense? Because we had a gain. 
we cannot even pay back the principal. So none of our payments should be considered interest expense. What would the creditor do? The creditor is starting with a balance of 1,800,000, 8,730, and it's based on the old balance was 3 million. Remember, we computed the new discounted cash flow and we took a loss of 1,191,270. So the new receivable is 1,808,730. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to compute the interest revenue based on the carrying amount times the old rate, which is 1,808,730 times 12%. That's going to be the interest revenue. The cash received is based on the new loan. The, ca the, 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 the debtor now is sending us 190,000 and we're going to split it between the interest revenue and the increase in the, in, increase in the carrying amount. And we're going to debit cash, debit allowance. And again, when we debit allowance, when we, it means we are reducing allowance. It means we are increasing the note. We increase the note to 1,835,778. Now, we're going to do this again for payment to 190,000, compute the interest revenue, and the difference is an increase in the note. By the third payment, our note will be 1.9 million. We're receiving the last payment of cash, 1.9 million, debit the allowance, 1,100,000, and crediting the notes receivable of 3 million. So those are the entries. What should you do now? Well, the best way to do this is to go to my to go to my website, farhatlectures.com, and work MCQs, multiple choice questions, to learn more about this topic. At the end of this recording, I'm going to remind you to take a look at my website. I provide you additional resources that's going to help you, whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate. Don't shortchange yourself. Your CPA exam is worth it. Your accounting career is worth it. Invest in yourself. It will pay dividend down the road. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.